Good afternoon, everybody. My name is James Watts. I would like to welcome everyone here, um, Bay State employees and outside friends and family to BE Connecting's Black History Moment tribute to African American black nurses here at Bay State. Um, I, I thank you uh, for your support. I know that the weather has played a difficult hand in where uh, past presentations, but uh, I thank you for coming out today. Um, we are here to honor our African American nurses here at Bay State Health, past, present, and future. Um, so we're gonna have a panel discussion from some very educated people of our community and from our hospital. We'll be uh, entertained by a young man, I believe from Alden Baptist Church, is it Alden? Yes. Reverend Coalfield, sir? Yes. All right, I, I, I did a little research, heard about you, sir. All right, uh, thank you for coming out. Um, and um, at this time, uh, we're gonna have some opening remarks from Christine Kluznick from uh, <laughs> the Vice President of Medicine of Cancer Service and Magnet and Professional Practice. And at this time, please give her a warm welcome to Christina. So good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of Bay State Health's leadership, unfortunately, uh, Nancy Shundofelic, our chief nurse um, and COO, was unable to be here also because of scheduling changes due to, related to the weather. I welcome you to our Black History Month ce celebration as we pay tribute to Bay State Black African American nurse pioneers. And as James said, we look back, we look at our, our learn from our past, and then we decide how we're going to move forward. For those of you that aren't aware, in 2010, the Institute of Medicine published a landmark report on the future of nursing and challenged all the states in our lovely country to address the challenges of leadership, education, practice of care, diversity, and interprofessional education. All 50 states in the United States currently have an action coalition that is working with their nursing leaders and their schools of nursing to really look at how um, as states and as individual organizations, we meet and try to develop plans to move forward and really address all these challenges. We're very fortunate here at Bay State that our leadership has embraced these challenges and we're working to support our nurses towards their Bachelor of Nursing, um, Bachelor of Science in Nursing, actually, as we try to create a more educated workforce. Our nurse residency program is now starting its seventh cohort in the last um, one and a half years of new graduates, a program geared toward easing the transition from academia into clinical practice. This, is a, this was actually a recommendation made in that report that organizations look and work with their states and their governmental agencies to implement nurse residency programs. So we're very fortunate that we have such an active program. This year, we're really um, pleased to report that the most recent cohort is very diverse in nature and actually will reflect the community that we serve. So that is a wonderful thing also. We're also the first healthcare institution in Massachusetts to appoint a nurse to the Board of Trustees, another recommendation from the IOM report. Dean Kathy Scoville from the Elms College now sits on our board. And that is really so wonderful, actually, when we think about healthcare in general, to have a nurse actually helping inform our other leaders that help make decisions about the care that we deliver. All of these efforts work together to help us coordinate care across all of our settings, meet the needs of our ever evolving healthcare system, and create a highly educated and skilled workforce that will work to improve the outcomes of our patients. So to that end, we hope that you enjoy our program, and again, welcome, and thank you all for being here. Thank you so much, Christina. All right, um, just before we begin, uh, we're gonna have a musical selection in a minute. But um, I would like to take a moment to uh, thank you to all the nurses here in the room. If uh, past, present, and maybe who's thinking about coming to Bay State as a nurse, could you stand at this time? I'd just like to give a public acknowledgement to some of the nurses here to see all the beautiful faces here. Thank you, ladies. 
I know today's African American nurses continue to overcome boundaries and achieve greater accomplishments by serving in the faces of healthcare, in the halls of government, in various branches of the military and nurses schools across the country. And we would just like to say thank you for participating in this program. Um, at this time, we are going to be entertained by Andre, am I saying it right? Andre Davy. Davy, yeah. Davy, would you please give a base state warm welcome to Mr. <laughs> Andre Davy. I want to thank Ms. Gloria Wilson for inviting me here. I have a wonderful group at the last minute which was supposed to be the last time we were supposed to have this event, um, said that they would stop uh, or break their, their work time to come and be here and to, to be a part of this and to help me. Um, this is Saved by Grace. And even, even before this event, they've been calling me and asking me, how can, I, how can we be a part of the community? You know, can we sing at different um, events that you, know, you might be at, or at different churches? Um, they, they're working on, on, on music, making their albums, CDs. Um, they're a real, really great blessing um, to me and to a lot of um, my friends and the community. Um, also, really quickly, um, as as the vice the vice president mentioned um, about the residency program, I was able to apply for it. I graduated in May from Elms College, and uh, and uh, through the process, I got a phone call, and you know. There was, there was an offer for me to join the Bay State team, so hopefully in the near future, I will be a part of this great family. And Strength and 
sweet release, I know He is and I am He. I will go on, my past I leave behind me. I gladly take His mercy and His love. Go on, go on, go on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. At this time, I would like to call Miss Gloria Wilson up to the podium, and she's going to do a presentation. Good afternoon. As James said, it's February is Black History Month. And Black Employees Connecting, BEC, has chosen this year to honor African American and Black nurses. So we thank you, Black Employees Connecting. I want to make sure that I also say Mr. Davies, Andre Davies, thank you so much for your kindness, your support. And it was at the end, I won't say last minute, but we kind of had little time. But I thank you so much for bringing Saving by Grace. Saved by Grace. Please give them a hand. So my role is to recognize my peers and recognize black nurses. So as an African-American nurse, I'd like to say, these are some of the characteristics. I try to think of what do we all possess? What do most of us possess that are in nursing? Stamina. We're pioneers leading the way, trailblazing. Spirit in nature, focused on the needs of people and others. Leaders, and some of my peers will not say that they are leaders. I think they have a gift, I think they are blessed, and they are leaders. I believe and will say strongly that they look at the past and have the strength to move forward. A couple of weeks ago, Mr. Robinson, one of our leaders, this month in his message said that he called that uh, Sankofa. I want you to see the little bird there. That little bird, that's symbolic of what that means. Looking at your past, moving forward. And that is what nursing has to be. I do not want to. Um, pass this occasion without saying that Eliza Mahoney is our first credited black nurse who led us many years ago into nursing and got rec us recognized as black nurses and leaders. But I do want you to know since then my role today is to bring forward those who are going forward. Those who are my peers, they are mentors, and leaders that can be described only as pioneers. So what I'm planning to do is offer a roll call. And I ask you to bear with me, because I mentioned it to some of my peers. We have with us as guests Western Mass Black Nurses, which is a Western Mass region, president being Chris Saunders Ayande, as one of our panelists. But what I'd like to ask is for all of the nursing, um, nursing staff or nursing in this room to please stand. And your roll call will be stand. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. What I'm going to ask you to do as your roll call is to, um, you can start right here in the front, and I, and I want to give as an example, Gloria Wilson, 42 years nursing. Years nursing. Ruth Amador, 10 years 
Mother's Nursing. Jerry Anderson Frederick, over 50 years. Chris Sanders Nande, 34 years. If you are a nurse, go right along. Now early, retired from base pay after over 40 years. Lanita <laughs> Allen, 15 years nursing. S.B. Bishop, one of the first graduates of the, the RN program at the Elms College. And um, I can't believe it, I'm 35 years. <laughs> is that we continue, but we'll hold our applause until the end so that we can hear all these wonderful nurses give testimony to their years. Yvonne Perry, 46 years. Mm. Edda Williams, 47 years, nursing, occupational health. Tommy Burton, 49 years, at Bay State Medical Center in nursing. Wow. Linda Alston, 47 years, community health and military. Carol Carlton, over 48 years, public health. I don't want to miss anyone back here. I miss me. I look at the center for 25 years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Oh, thank you. Um, oh, oh, 30 years, emergency department. <clears throat> We're coming forward. So, Valencia well, Chicoyan, 18 years nursing. Shauna Edwards, 20 years nursing. Alice Jones, 38 years nursing, Bay State. Tanya Martin, 10 years nursing. Alicia Gordon, 16 years nursing. Yolanda DePasta, also 12 years in nursing. Charles Red, 20 years nursing. Burnett Townsend, 30 years nursing. I want to make sure I gave everyone an opportunity. So I thank you. Give yourselves a hand, please. So that I presented to you the leaders, the nurses that are in this room, and I thank you all for your service. At this time, I'm going to turn the next part of our program, over to Ms. Sir James Wow. One more hand clap for all those men. I mean, I'm, seriously. I knew some of you in the room, but wow. I, I, I'm, I'm just proud to be in your presence, ladies. Um, wow, and, 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 and new and old. New and seasoned, I'm not old, seasoned. <laughs> okay, moving right along, um, we're going to start our panel discussion. I'm going to call up at this time our moderator, Ms. Kimothy Jones, please. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Be Connecting's recognition and tribute to black nurses. I have the honor and privilege of facilitating or moderating the panel discussion today. So as you hear your name called, please come and sit in your seat up front. Our first panelist is Donna Jean Brown. She is the interim practice manager at Bay State Mason Square Neighborhood Health Center. Sitting next to Donna would Miss Betty Anderson Frederick, Deputy Commissioner, City of Springfield Health and Human Services Department. Mr. Charles Red will soon, next month, beginning next month, be accepting the position as Emergency Department Nurse, Head Nurse at Franklin Hospital, Bay State Franklin Hospital. <laughs> we 
representing the local Black Nurses Association, we have Christine Saunders Allende. And last but certainly not least, our own Burnett Townsend. She is Bay State Medical Nursing and Transplant Unit. So welcome panelists and thank you for joining us today as we celebrate and recognize the contribution of black African American nurses. My first question is for each of you and my first question is for each of you and you have approximately three minutes to five minutes to answer this question. First, I would like you to give a more formal introduction of yourselves and the roles that you play in your respective organizations. And then I would like you to answer the question, if you could turn back the hands of time, knowing what you know now, what one thing would you tell yourself as a young, aspiring nurse today? And we'll start with Donna. We'll just go down the road for this first one. Okay. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is um, Donna Brown. I'm the interim manager for Mason Square Health Center. And I'm happy and honored to be part of this panel discussion today with the invitation from Gloria and the team. Um, to talk a little bit more about myself, um, I was born and raised in um, Jamaica, a um, beautiful island of Jamaica, um, and I also want to acknowledge Andre, who's my um, nephew, and Diana Chung back there is also my niece, or my cousin actually, she calls me Auntie Diana, but we're cousins. But and I'm proud that my family is in this um, nursing profession as well. But I was born and raised in, in Jamaica, had some experience, at least two years of experience after um, leaving nursing school. Then um, Faith took me to London, England, where I continued my studies. As a um, gastroenterology nurse, I worked in the department for, for many years. And within that time also, I went to midwifery school because I wanted to be a midwife, not because I liked it, but because I wanted to do something more. Um, but I didn't continue my midwifery course because I had to transition to the United States with our two kids. My husband is in the background there, Dennis Brown. And we came, migrated to the United States with our two children who were born in London, England as well. And where I got a job within the community, and community of Mason Square. And this is where I kind of found my niche because I love being in the community. And this is the type of job that a lot of people don't like because they don't like to get their hands dirty because to them the community is not the place to be. But I love being in the community and ever since um, I've been working there, I worked with the Martin Luther King Community Health Community Center and also with the Massachusetts Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to the Children. And then I, seven years ago, I got a job as a registered nurse at the um, Mason Square Health Center and most recently, I am the interim manager of the center. And what was my other question? <laughs> <laughs> if you could turn back the hands of time. Okay. If I what, could. What would, <laughs> knowing what you know now, what one thing would you tell yourself as a young, expiring nurse today? It, it's funny, I sat at my desk this morning and um, it was very difficult to answer that question because I jotted down eight things and it was actually coming off my paper and I had so many other things, but I, to be obedient, I'm just going to give one thing. Um, but I don't like to think about um, turning back the hands of time because my faith in God and my Christian worldview allows me to believe that God has, has already predestined me. To, to be here. So I would tell anyone who um, wants to be a nurse or is a young nurse to put into perspective, what is it that you're here for? You're here because of what? 
the patient. So therefore, have the patient experience. And this is where the role of nursing is going now, where we put ourselves in the patient's experience. So therefore, I believe that you should put yourself in that shoe. But be aware also of developing new cultures and culture shifts. And also be aware of how patients are being treated because of technology. So just be aware, my focus is being aware of your surrounding and just move with the flow of time and don't get stuck in the past, but move on with culture, technology, patient experience, whatever is it in front of you, just see it and move towards that goal. Thank you, Donna. Now we'll hear from Ms. Betty Anderson Fredericks. Good afternoon. I am Betty Anderson Frederick, and I work for Helen Carlton Harris, Health Commissioner for the City of Springfield. But before that, I was an eight-year-old little girl who wanted to be a nurse, but more later on. I'm truly honored and delighted to be asked to participate in the Bay State Health Black History Month hashtag Black Nurse Pride of Pioneers. <laughs> I must admit that when first approached, I said I had never worked for Bay State. Then I said, wait a minute, I receive a stipend from Bay State. <laughs> In Springfield, I have always worked for Bay State. First, that was the Springfield Visiting Nurse Association, now Bay State Visiting Nurse Association and Hospice. Then there was the Neighborhood Health Center that's now Bay State Mason Square Neighborhood Health Center. There was the Wesson's Postpartum Program at, at uh, Women's Hospital, which is now Bay State Health Women's Hospital. So yeah, I guess I've worked for Bay State <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> Now, back to that, back to that eight-year-old little girl. It was a long time ago, I knew I wanted to be a nurse, to nurture and to comfort. My mom was hospitalized when I was about eight years old. She was at Hillman Hospital, then Jefferson Hillman, and later UAB. On the south side of Birmingham, I keep losing my microphone, so if somebody <laughs> don't hear me, Please just wave. On the south side of Birmingham, black and poor people were sent to this particular hospital for service. The staff was all white and did not appreciate caring for black folks, so I was able to get her meals, help her to eat, provide water, get her bedpan, change her bed linen. I was able to do all the things that a little girl who thinks they want to be a nurse could do without any interference. Nobody bothered me, nobody said a word. I was her all around gopher and her nurturer and comforter. The question is often asked, do kids really know what they want to do in life at an early age? The research and narratives would say yes. Condoleezza Rice, our former Secretary of State, tells the story of being quite young and seeing someone on TV ice skating with a tutu on. She told her parents, that's what I want to do when I get big. And she pursued this goal for many years until she had a growth spurt and gained weight. That was the end of that. Andre Agassi, world famous tennis player, was an infant when his father put a mobile in his crib to strengthen his eye coordination and a racket in his hand at three years old. We all know how that turned out. Years later, Andre had won eight Grand Slam champ, uh, championships, an Olympic gold medalist at Stone Mountain in Atlanta, and many, many awards and trophies. Bill Belichick, head coach of the New England Patriots, was eight years old when he wanted to be a to coach football. He followed his father, Steve, to practices. He accompanied him on scouting trips. He spent hours reviewing films, and we know what happened to him. Later, when I was old enough to do something about being a nurse, there were challenges. As you know, 
blacks were not allowed to attend white nursing schools in Alabama at that time, but that's another story. The question being asked today is, if I could turn back the clock, what would I suggest or advise the one thing I would tell young aspiring nurses today? Actually, it would be 1.5. The point five being, if you know where you wish to go and end your journey, make sure you know the path forward. You know the skills, abilities, the formal education, the degrees, etc., that you need, and then pursue it with dogged determinants. Although married several times, I've spent most of my adult life as a single mom, and I found how difficult it is to complete all the goals and visions that you have for yourself. Life always serves with interruptions. Now, the one thing is to maintain your practice in some shape, form, or other. If your movement is upward in administration and away from the patient, this realization came late for me. However, I've struggled to min minimize that disconnect by volunteerism. At the beginning of the free clinic movement, I volunteered there then international health missions, and later community slash resident service projects. So where there's a will, there is a way, and you must keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. Now we'll hear from Christine. Burnett. No, Burnett. Burnett. I'm sorry, Burnett Thompson. Okay, so um, this might be a moment where I say ditto, but I won't. <laughs> um, my name is Vernette Townsend, and, and I'm going to tell you who I am by telling you where I come from. Um, I come from a very culturally diverse and rich background. My father is from Jamaica, West Indies, like many um, in the room, and my mother is Cuban by nationality, but is born to a French mother and an Asian father. So why I tell you that is cultural diversity has been part of my fabric my entire life. And who I am today, I bring that with me. So at Bay State, I am the Director of Medical Nursing and Transplant Services. And you heard earlier that I have a 30-year career. Only five years have been at Bay State. And my career has spanned um, from the Army Nurse Corps in the military and then over several organizations um, after that. So I want to tell you about what I bring to the table. Uh, with a culturally uh, diverse background and being first generation in the family to grow up in this country and having parents who have not had formal education, there is a different perspective on life than when you're born into the, the land that has. So you start at being industrious at a very young age because when you're an immigrant in this country, children are often left at home early and they learn fortitude at a very early age. The, my parents, when they, when they came to this country, all they had were dreams and hopes, and what they heard a lot of was no and can't. So we often heard the lesson that those, those are not words that are to be part of your life. And as a, a very special person often reminds me, no one can't lives on Walt Street, and we don't live on that street. So you don't have to accept no and can't. And that was part of who I, I that is who I am today. Starting out um, in a private school, because again, when you come to this country, you know the way that you get forward is to get an education, and parents sacrifice to do that. But again, entering into a private education and coming from a home where uh, English was, was, uh, had a dialect or was not the first language, um, you, I was labeled as actually being learning disabled early and that this school was not appropriate for me because they didn't have special education. Well, you have to understand my father doesn't like the word no or can't uh, because it means that they live on Won't Street and he went in there and told them what they would not do and that they would teach me and they would teach him how to teach me um, more. So why I, I share that with you, recently, uh, a few months ago, I decided to share with my leadership team what is my purpose statement. Why am I here? Why do I do what I do? And I want to share that with you, and hopefully you can hear from where I'm coming from why this is so important. So as a, a nurse leader at Bay State, as a, a leader in life, uh, my purpose is to role model, mentor, support, lead, and serve all people 
regardless of their zip codes, to be the best that they can be to influence positively the lives of others. And the reason the zip code is important to me, because again, being first generation in this country, our zip code was not the zip code of the school that I went to. And it gets a little lonely when parents don't allow their children to come over because your zip code is so far removed from their zip code. But what it's done is it's, it's taught me to appreciate life in its fullest. So keeping to my three minutes, and uh, if I had to turn back the clock of time and to talk to a young nurse starting out at the bedside, this is what I would impart to that individual. When you get out of nursing school, you feel that you're armed with all the tools that you need to be successful. You have all the theoretical framework, you've learned all the sciences, you're ready to save the world. But what you're, what you're doing is entering life. And life can't be packaged in any book or any theoretical framework. Who comes to that bedside has been influenced by what you learned in school, but it is not who shows up at the bedside. You have to bring your authentic self to that, to that bedside. Another important lesson for my parents always was, and we hear it throughout a lot of the celebrations this month, some people tell you never to look back and I advise you to always look back. You have to know what your frame of reference is, and then my father always threw a, a little wrench in there, and when you look back, you always put your hand down, pull someone forward. You cannot go forward if you leave people behind. So where you come from, you have to know that history, you have to understand that history, and you have to go forward with it. And when you're at that bedside and you're starting out your nursing career, know that you are in the classroom of training for nursing leaders of tomorrow. That is where you learn your skills. It is not a nine to five job. This is a passionate career. You're serving people. You've chosen to walk among the brave and the proud, men and women. And we need to take the lessons that we learn at that bedside and carry them forward proudly. You learn advocacy. You learn how to manage workflow. You learn supply management, finances, relationship, planning, change, and you're dealing with life and death. So that is the extension of the classroom. It is the beginning of a journey, and hopefully that you, you take it for what it is and not decide 10 years down the road that maybe I'm going to go into a nursing leadership position because you've already begun the training. Thank you. We are getting a little short on time. It is almost 10 minutes to the close of our program, so I'm going to ask the final two panelists to pre please try to limit your answer to this first question because I do have a couple of follow-up questions I'd like to ask individuals. So next is Ms. Christine Sanders Allende. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say I'm so honored to be invited to this program to be a panelist um, thank you so much. I just want to say that I, my roots actually started at Bay State. I was a volunteer in high school, and I knew from birth, uh, ever since I can remember, I wanted to be a nurse. Um, and uh, I am now the president of Western Mass Black Nurses Association, and I'd like to take a moment to invite each and every one of you who are not presently members to consider becoming membership members of the Western Mass Black Nurses Association. Um, I am, um, have been employed in the past at Bay State. My roots, like I said, are here in Bay State. Um, and I just have to say that I am now working as a clinical faculty member at, at AIC and as nurses, we are, have diversity like you can work in the hospital, you can work as educators in the community, which I also am working in the community as well. And keeping up with time, I'd like to say that to new nurses, or uh, think about when you have your, when you pass the NCLEX, your first priority should be get your base. And your base should be in a residency program. The residency program will help you through your career. You will have that base for which to expand your future. And that can be community nursing, leadership. Um, thank you. Charles Red. 
Good afternoon. Um, I'm, I'm like, I'm really amazed and overwhelmed. I, I try to think, because I believe the question was asked, what would I tell myself if I could go back in time? And, and really, to be honest, I would say to myself, keep doing what you're doing. And I can say that because of where I am now. As, as a nurse and, and as a leader, which I believe that I am, um, I always worked, I, always went, I built a character. It wasn't about what was on the outside. Um, it was about what was on the inside and how I carried myself and how I did my job and how people saw me. Um, and when I did that, um, amazing things happened to me. Um, and my ability to, to lead people, to change people, and to have people want to do more for themselves. Uh, whether that be working in a hospital at the bedside, talking to a patient um, that's struggling with whatever they're struggling with, if that means going out and talking to young men out in the community, which I have done uh, most of my career, um, and, and helping them to, to giving them some guidance. Um, so really, I, I wouldn't change the road that I chose. I wouldn't change the road that I was on. My life wasn't always great. But I did have a great leader in my house, my mother, as Vernette will tell you. <laughs> and, and, my, and every leadership skill that I have within me is every lesson that my mother tr taught me and tried to teach me. It took me 31 years to figure it out. <laughs> but I did. And when I did that, it just opened up a whole new world for me. So what would I say to a, a new nurse um, um, coming up? You know, just do your job and do it right. That's all I can say. Do your job and do it right. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, um, for those wonderful responses to our first question. As a follow-up, Charles, I'm going to pick on you because <laughs> you're the only male on the panel. What has been one of your most rewarding or challenging aspects of your career? Hey. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I think when you talk about rewarding, is especially working at Bay State, it's an opportunity to uh, be able to work with great leaders. Um, I don't mean to embarrass anybody, but I, I will tell you that um, one of my leaders is sitting at this table here. And um, it, when I talk about you know, doing the right thing, uh, Vernette always does the right thing. Always honest and, and, and forthcoming with what she has to say to you. And you know, those are qualities that um, I respect in a leader. Those are qualities that I'm going to take with me um, when I go to Franklin, and um, you know, so if I have to say anything, it's, it's the opportunity to work with great people and to learn and to grow and to be successful. And um, my success, the smile that it puts on Vanette's face, the smile that it puts on my manager Laura Douglas's face, um, I, you know, I can't say anything more than that. So, thank you, Charles. Thank you. Christine, you already gave some advice to all of the nurses on the panel as well as in the audience. Can you speak a little bit about the importance of professional organizations such as the Black Nurses Association and why you would advise everyone to become a part of that? Absolutely. I think. Every health care professional um, owes it to the community to be involved. Be involved, be involved. You can be involved on a national level, and you can also be involved on a community level. And one way to connect yourself on the community level is by joining an organization such as 
the Western Mass Black Nurses. Uh, we are involved with the community in terms of educating people with, say, diabetes. We go to churches. We put on presentations. Um, there are presentations that are uh, geared to the community in terms of recognizing the status of STDs in our area. And uh, it comes to mind, we, ha we had a presentation from someone from the West Coast pointing out um, statistics that I wasn't aware of. And that was just profound. Um, and so we educate ourselves, and then that way we can educate our population. Um, we also support one another in terms of professionalism and, and, and for patient advocacy. Patient advocacy, patient advocacy, I can't repeat it enough. Um, and that being part of that organization gives you uh, a, 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 a way to present your professionalism and let people know that you are there to support them and that you have uh, nurses, the collective of nurses, to support one another. Thank you very much. You're welcome. In the interest of time, I'm going to ask for Mr. James Watts to come forward and to take over the program. And this concludes the questions for our panelists. And I just want to thank all of them for their wonderful responses. I'm going to say uh, thank you to the supporting team of our uh, marketing department, also our catering department. But at this time, um, I would like to invite up our planning team to give a token of appreciation to our panelists. So uh, all our um, people who helped participate in this event, please step forward, please. And uh, panelists, thank you again. Uh, I've been here a long time, and I've never been prouder to be another Bay State employee. Uh, thank you for coming out. Thank you for being here. So at this time, um, Rose, would you like to? Good afternoon. My name is Rose Westbrook, and I am the chairperson of Black Employees Connecting Employee Resource Group here at Bay State Medical Center. And what we'd like to do on behalf of the planning co committee is to uh, share a token of gift um, with each of our panelists and our musician here this evening, um, or this afternoon, and just to let you know that we appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to share and impart some knowledge. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anna Marie Golden with the Office of Government, or Community Relations and Public Health now. Um, on behalf of Frank Robinson, our new Vice President of Community Relations and Public Health, in our office we would like to present each of the panelists with a copy of the Republicans, The Struggle for Freedom. It's a beautiful history book about African Americans in Western Mass. So um, we hope you enjoy. And um, I hope you truly enjoy those um, tokens of appreciation. Um, the first book I know I've read and the second book I've read, um, one is the history of Springfield and one is the history of Bay State. And together, um, they reflect some of the words that you've said this afternoon. Um, at the closing, we would like to call Mr. Andres Gonzalez, uh, our chief diversity operator to have some closing remarks on this beautiful program today. All right, good afternoon, everyone. I have the honor and pleasure, quite frankly, I'm not sure how anyone can top the, uh, our panelists today. So let's give them another round of applause. They were fabulous, right? I was really struck as we were going around and honoring and highlighting our nurses here in the room that we have over 500 plus years 
of wisdom and experience in the room. And that I think it's comforting and it's wonderful for our region. Um, I think this event really exemplifies um, the commitment that Bay State Health has to continue to build the cultural competence journey of all of our caregivers. And furthermore, to really make an impact in the community. I think that everyone, there was a thread in terms of what really motivated people to go into this role, into this, um, obviously into nursing. And it was about wanting to make a difference for our community. And so I would challenge all of us, regardless of our role within either Bay State or in the community, both professionally and civically, to take that challenge and say, what can I do or what can I continue to do to make an impact in our community? Because it really lies in our efforts collectively to make the difference moving forward. So with that, I would like to again thank our panelists Panelists, I also want to thank B Connecting and their planning team for putting together this spectacular event. And they also wanted me to mention briefly that there will be um, other information coming out in the next uh, few days. So be on the lookout for those of you who are part of Bay State in terms of a trivia that will continue to engage us and educate us in terms of the richness of our Black History Month. So thank you so much for coming out and I'll turn it over to Ms. Rose Westbrook. Yeah. We have plenty of food left over and plenty of cake, so please take some with you and um, enjoy.